Welcome to chapter two. In this section, we are going to begin by looking at the slope of the tangent line using the definition of slope. We're going to start by looking at the slope of a tangent line using a table. So essentially what we're doing is we're looking at a secant line. And a secant line is the line through the point at which we're finding the slope of the tangent line and some other point on the curve. So it's not the actual tangent line, it's just close to the slope of the tangent line. Now we did this before um, when we were looking at uh, chapter one, section one, and we said here's one of the, the big problems in math. So we can start by finding the slope of the secant line through two, one, and some other point. So we're gonna start one whole unit away at three. So three and then f of three. So really what I have to do is take this function and plug in three. So that's three squared minus two times three plus one. So nine minus six is three plus one is four. So this value is four. And I'm going to find the slope of the secant line. So on my little picture down here, you can't really see it because three would be here and then four would be up here somewhere. So that's what we're doing is essentially finding the slope of the line through this. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So four minus one is three, three minus two is one. So that slope is three. So that would give me the four for f of three, and then my slope of three on my table. And essentially I would continue that over and over. So at points closer and closer and closer to two from the right hand side, and then of course from the left hand side as well. And when I do that, I come up with this table. So what do I think is the actual slope of the tangent line at two one? Well, if I'm looking at slope, these are the two values closest to 2, 2.01 and 1.99, and their slopes are closest to 2. So it appears that at x equals 2, the slope of the tangent line is 2. But again, that's just an approximation, so we want to be a little bit more precise. Just like you, making a table to me seems silly and a waste of my mathematical abilities and talents and time. So we want to think about a mathier way to do this. So before I take you through how to do this using the slope formula, let's make sure we understand what we're doing. So here's my picture, and this is going to be the point C in all of this. So this is the point at which I'm trying to find the slope. And then there's going to be some delta x. Delta x just means change in x. So how far away from x am I going to be? So if I'm using the point 2.5, then delta x would be 0 0.5 because I would have added 0.5 to 2. So we get the idea that delta x is the thing that's changing because if I found the slope of the line connecting these two points, that would be different than say if I used this point, which looks to be like 2.6, which means delta x would be like, you know, 0.1. So we get the idea that delta x just represents the difference between, or the distance between C and where I'm actually finding the slope of the secant line. So delta x just means change in x. What is the difference in x? So when I'm using this with my slope formula, I'm going to be using C and F of C, which is the Y value at C. And then I'm going to be using another point, which is going to be called C plus Delta X, which we know Delta X could represent any distance. So somewhere in here, this is C plus Delta X, meaning this distance would be delta x. And then we're going to use f of c plus delta x. So really we're talking about 
two ordered pairs, which is what we need when we're using the definition of a slope, which is right here. So here's my slope formula. And instead of y2, I'm replacing that with f of c plus delta x. So that's my second y value. Minus y1, so minus f of c. And my denominator is x2, so that's c plus delta x. That's my second x minus my first x of c. Now, in the numerator, there's nothing that can be reduced. So I cannot distribute this and say that I end up with just f of delta x. So please don't be the person who does that because you, I promise, will get laughed at. You cannot distribute that. So this is f of c plus delta x minus f of c. Nothing can be done in the numerator. In the denominator, I've got a c and a minus c, and that can be canceled, which leaves me with just delta x. So here's what I have. That is using the definition of slope, but again, this is a calculus class. This isn't algebra, this is calculus. So where does the calculus come in? We're saying, okay, now that we understand exactly what we're trying to find, let's find the limit as delta x approaches zero. So stop for a minute and think about that. We said delta x could be any distance. So we're saying as delta x approaches zero, so as that point gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to c, we want to find the slope. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to find the limit as delta x approaches zero, as the difference between our point and the second point gets closer to zero, what's the slope? So this f of c plus delta x minus f of c all over delta x, this is how we're going to find the slope of the tangent line using the definition of a slope. We're going to do a couple of practice, and for our first practice, we're going to find, we're going to use that definition we came up with to find the slope at just one point. And so I'm going to show you the quickest way at just one point. So just as a reminder, we're using the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of c plus delta x minus f of c over delta x. So essentially what we're saying is we want C to be three because we're using that X value. And so if it's just at that point, then when I'm finding these values in the numerator, F of C plus Delta X and F of C, I'm using three for C. So let's start with what is F of C plus Delta X? Well, we just said that C is actually three. So I'm basically finding F of three plus delta X. And keep in mind, again, if you'd like to use H, you sure can, because H is often used instead of delta X. So you would replace all the delta X's with H's. I'm gonna stick with delta X for now. So what do I get when I plug in three plus delta X for X? Well, I'm going to get two times three plus delta x minus three, which is going to reduce to six plus two delta x minus three, which is going to reduce to three plus two delta x. Okay, now what is f of c? Well, we already said that f of c is actually just f of three because that's the x value. And so that's two times three minus three, which is six minus three, which is three. So I'm going to go back over here now and I'm finding the limit as delta X approaches zero of this value was F of C plus delta X. So that's three plus two delta X. And I'm subtracting f of c, which was three. So I'm subtracting three. And I'm being a little bit obnoxious about my 
parentheses right now just because keep in mind that there could be an actual expression here containing more than one term and you would want to make sure that you distributed the negative to all values. So I'm going to now just do the algebra. And again, why can't I just plug in zero because delta x is my denominator and I don't want to have zero in my denominator. So again, that's why I have to do this math. So I have three plus two delta x minus three. And so the three and the minus three will cancel. That gives me two delta x in my numerator and delta x in my denominator. Again, notice that I'm writing limit each time because I haven't actually done the direct substitution of replacing delta x with zero. So I still have to write the limit as delta x approaches zero. And now I'm going to reduce the delta x. So that gives me two over one or just two. And that limit is two. So I have, this is how to use the definition of a slope to find the slope of a tangent line at a specific point. For this question, we're actually asked to do the exact same thing, except as you'll notice, I've been asked to do this for three points instead of just one. So instead of having to find f of zero plus delta x and f of zero and f of one plus delta x and f of one and f of two plus delta x and f of two, which seems like a lot of work, instead of doing all of that, I'm going to keep everything generic until I get to the end. So here's what I mean by that. Keep in mind, I am finding the limit as delta x approaches zero, or again, as we get closer and closer to the point C of f of C plus delta x, minus f of c over delta x. So how am I going to keep it generic? Instead of finding f of zero and one and two plus delta x, I'm going to find f of c plus delta x. So that means c plus delta x quantity squared minus one, and I'm going to do the math here. So that's C times C. So again, think of this as me writing it out twice. I guess I hope we remember that. C plus delta X times C plus delta X. And we're going to FOIL it. So I get C squared plus two C delta X plus delta X squared. And then minus what? And so that is the entire expression that represents f of c plus delta x. And then if we're using f of c, well, that's just c squared minus one. So as I come back over here to find the slope, again, the limit as delta x approaches zero of c squared plus two c delta x plus delta x squared minus one minus c squared minus one. So again, using that parenthesis reminds me I'm subtracting c squared and subtracting minus one over delta x. So now again, I'm just doing algebra until I can make sense, a little more sense of what I have. So I'm going to go ahead and call this plus and make this negative and make this positive. So the c squared, and the negative c squared will cancel. And the minus one and the now plus one will cancel. So what I have left in my numerator is two c delta x plus delta x squared divided by delta x. And I can just reduce out that delta x. So think about taking a delta x out of all of the terms in the numerator. So that gives me the limit as delta x approaches zero. And if you need to go ahead and rewrite it, limit as delta x <laughs> approaches zero of delta x being factored out, giving me two c plus delta x. I can certainly do it that way, or you can do that in your head. I'm just sort of over showing work so that we understand exactly what's happening. But this gives me two c plus delta x. 
and now I can find the limit as delta x approaches 0. So that's going to give me 2c, and then this is essentially 0, so 2c plus 0 or 2c. So my limit is 2c. Now, does that help me yet to determine the slope at each of these points? Well, now I can determine it quite easily because I can find when x is equal to 0, I'm going to get 2 times 0, which is 0. And when x is equal to 1, I'm going to get 2 times 1 because, again, it's just 2 times c. So c is 1 or x is 1. And that gives me 2. And when x is equal to 2, that gives me 2 times 2, or 4. So this gives me the slope of the tangent line at all of those points because I kept everything general and kept the c in the equation. Before we finish up, here's one of those for you to try. So I'd like you to press pause and try this question. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So I'm going to do this question again. This time I'm going to use h approaches 0. Um, just because some people prefer it that way. So h approaches 0 of f of c plus h minus f of c over h is essentially what we're doing. And so what is, again, I'm going to keep writing the limit until I plug in 0 for h. So the limit is h approaches 0. And then f of c plus h. So again, I'm finding it for two points, so I'm not going to use 2 or 3. I'm going to use... Um, C. So that's 2 times C plus H quantity squared minus 5. And then I'm subtracting F of C. So 2 C squared minus 5 all over H. Again, the limit as H approaches 0. I have to do the math up here. So notice before I was doing some extra work over here. Um, this is typically the way I do it. I just do it all in the equation. So that gives me 2 times c squared plus 2ch plus h squared minus 5 minus 2c squared plus 5 over h. These 5s I know cancel and this 2c squared will cancel with the minus 2c squared. So that leaves me with the limit as h approaches 0 of 4ch plus 2h squared over h. I'm going to divide out the h. So that's the limit as h approaches 0 of 4c plus 2h. And that limit, when I plug h in, 0 in for h, gives me 4c. So now, to finally answer my question, I'm going to let x equal 2. And that gives me 4 times 2, or 8. And I'm going to let x equal 3. So that gives me 4 times 3, which is 12. So that would give me my two values that I was trying to find for x equals 2 and x equals 3. Up next, we're going to start to learn about derivatives. And again, this is going to be the derivative using the definition of a derivative.